Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is a briefing about Safar moon sighting from www.central-mosque.com. Before I launch into the briefing, which is going to be in English, inshallah, there will be a separate one in Urdu. Uh, I just would like to say that those who follow Saudi Arabia, there is no official decision in Saudi Arabia for this month. There is no announcement. So if your mosque or your imam or your committee is telling you that Safar started on a particular day based on Saudi Arabia, you have the right to go back to them and ask them where did they get this decision. So now let's proceed with the briefing insha'Allah. So what I will do as usual is the first few slides will describe why moon sighting is important, why we need to do the moon sighting for all 12 months, and then in the end we will talk about the month of Safar insha'Allah. I have a longer, almost a two hour video where all of these slides are discussed in detail. I discuss the evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah and so on. So what I'm doing here is I'm summarizing some of the salient points. I'm going to go through it quickly, uh, briefly. I will embed the two hour presentation in the links. Watch it in full to actually understand the evidence behind it and so on and so forth. Inshallah. So why cite the moon in the first place? All of the or and in fact most of the actions in Islam which are time bound are either connected with the sun or the moon some of the actions are connected with the sun for example the salah right when do you pray the the action and what time the salah is actually connected with the sun the others actually connected with the moon for example if woman who gets divorced or widowed she has to spend a certain amount of time before she remarries it is called idda in islamic law and that is connected with the the passing of the time it is connected with the lunar dates and not the solar dates so she has to wait a certain amount of time if her husband's passed away or she has been widowed that idda the time passing is connected with the lunar date so if you because it's connected to the lunar date how else will you calculate the lunar dates if you do not cite the moon the fasting on ashura 10th of Muharram, the fasting of three days of Islamic months, it is connected with the moon. How else would you know when Muharram starts? How else would you know when Safar, Rabi Lawal, Rabi Thani, Rajab starts? These are lunar months, so they start with the sighting of the moon and they end with the sighting of the moon when the next Islamic month starts. They're all connected with the moon. In Islam, zakah is a pillar of Islam. It is something that you pay which is in excess of your wealth. Uh, if 12 months have passed on it, that 12 months are lunar 12 months, not solar 12 months. If you do not cite the moon, how will you calculate those lunar months? And then, obviously, Ramadan. You cite the moon, you start Ramadan, you cite the moon, Ramadan ends, Shawwal starts, which is Eid al-Fitr, and also Hajj, the month of Dhul-Hijjah, is connected with the moon. These are obvious things that I've listed. There are many other Islamic injunctions which are connected with the moon. So the question that you obviously have to ask is, okay, what do we do with the moon? Do we cite it? Do we determine it? Do we calculate it? What do we do with it? Good question. In Islam, Islamic months start with the sighting of the Hilal. The translation in English is the crescent. The Arabic word Hilal means a spectacle which bedazzles you. That's what the root word and the, and the original Arabic, the word Hilal actually means. So imagine that you're going on a dark night and you know the, the, it's cloudy and all of a sudden the clouds lift and you see the Hilal, you see, and you're absolutely astonished, bedazzled with the beauty of this spectacle. This is what's called Hilal. So the word itself from pure Arabic grammar shows you and tells you that it is something, it's a spectacle. Spectacle is something which is seen. It is a visual event. So the word itself tells you. Number two, the, the ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu clearly tell you that it is something to be cited and then you recite a dua after it how else would you do that without citing it so uh, basically there's a dua after you finish eating when do you recite the dua you finish eating you recite the dua so the recitation of the dua is after you cite the hilal how else will you do it you have to perform this action and if you cite the moon you recite the dua if you finish eating you recite the dua of finishing eating for example you're not going to recite the dua of finishing eating when you're not eating so 
that also tells you that it is something that needs to be cited. Then the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam doesn't just simply end there. It doesn't tell you go and try to cite the moon on the 29th. It tells you go and try to cite the moon on the 29th. If it is cloudy, then complete 30 days. So again, it's a it's a visual uh, phenomenon. So you're trying to cite something and an impediment or some kind of curtain or something or, or an obstruction comes in your way. It is cloudy. You cannot cite. Then Rasulullah tells you what to do. If it would, if we were to rely on science, then this cannot happen because you can calculate the, 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 the shape of the moon, the orbit of the moon, the distance of the moon, the position of the moon and the form of the moon at any given time. There would be no reason to talk about clouds because we have mathematics. We can do that with absolute precision. But the hadith of Rasulullah tells you, cite the moon on the 29th. When you cite it, read the dua. If you don't cite it or if it's hidden from you for some reason, if it's cloudy or even if it's not cloudy and you don't see it, complete 30 days. So that tells you it is a visual phenomenon. Then lastly, it is a 1400 plus years tawatar, continuous actions of the Muslim. Muslims, when you pick up the books of fiqh, you pick up the books of ahadith, you look at the, the, the practice of the salaf, you pick up the, the practice of the earlier Muslims, they cited the moon. And, and this is a tradition which has reached us continuously. So for example, uh, you know, any Muslim all over the world, you know, you pray, you you uh, you face the direction of Kaaba. Well known, and this is what we've been doing. So even if you did not know the the, the evidence of it from the Quran and the Sunnah, you would know that you need to face the Kaaba. So similarly, the start in the end of Islamic month has is connected with the sighting of the moon, and it is the Tawatar, continuous actions of the Muslims. Then some people say, look, what is the point in my country sighting the moon when can't we just have a single sighting of anywhere on the globe and just carry on with it? No, the same tradition of Islam, of Muslims, which tells us to sight the moon, it is that Muslims sight the moon everywhere in their location or in their country or whatever. The first argument which is put forth is of the Hanafi Madhab. It is astounding that the people who do not follow Hanafi Madhab, they do not follow Hanafi scholars. When it comes to Ramadan and stuff to justify the sighting uh, or the moon sighting in Saudi Arabia or wherever country they're trying to follow, the first argument they put forth is the Hanafi Madhab. The Hanafi Madhab tells us we should have global sighting. No brother, this is argument. This is a, a detailed article. The translation is still not complete. I was looking at it today. Um, they're still doing it. Take a look and it gives you the argument from the Hanafi Madhab. The global sighting is not the Muftabihi opinion of the Hanafi Madhab at all. Majority of, them, of the Hanafi Muslims, they live in, in the Asian uh, um, continent, Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, Afghanistan and so forth. And none of them follow global sighting at all. They have their own local sighting. In fact, Pakistan and India are next to each other and they have their local sighting and always have from the beginning. So read the argument of the Hanafi Madhab, uh, read it, respond to it and say, look, this is not right and this is the opinion. But this is not an argument that it practically and also from a fiqh perspective, it is local sighting. Secondly, we have a hadith in Sahih Muslim of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, who uh, a person came from uh, Syria and he said, I had sighted the moon. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu in Medina, he said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us to sight the moon, therefore we are going to sight the moon. One brother, he made this argument, he goes, look, this was the action of a singular Sahabi, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu. The argument to that is that it was the action of a single Sahabi of Ibn Abbas anhu that nobody else objected to. So the Sahaba did not say Ibn Abbas, no, 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 we should be taking the sighting from Syria while we're in Medina. No, the Sahaba did not say that. They, they, they actually carried on their, with their own sighting and they did not change the Islamic date based on this person who had testified, who had sighted the moon himself. So it was not a reporting of a sighting. This person himself had sighted the moon. And this narration is in Sahih Muslim. Then we have action, dua and tawatar, continuous practice of Islam that Muslims cited the moon. You read the books of history, you read the practice of Muslims before us and they cite, they tried to cite the moon and they established the Islamic months based on citing of the moon. Lastly, some people tried to put this uh, logical argument forward. They said, why do we have one moon, but we have sort of so many different dates? Why can't we all start in the same day? Because we have one moon. Brother, it's the same reason why you have one sun 
but people in Jakarta, Indonesia do not pray their Fajr on the same time as Muslims in New York, United States, because the earth is round. We have different time zones. So, yes, we have a singular moon, but this moon is not sighted necessarily on the same day. Just like you have a singular sun, but you don't have the same Fajr Salah time in Jakarta and United States. The same argument applies. So, it, it, basically, the moon needs to be sighted in your own location with, or your own country or, or, or whoever is in charge, the ulama who are in charge of the moon sighting of your country and you cannot take moon sighting from elsewhere. As I talked about, uh, I said from a fiqh perspective, most people try to put forth the Hanafi madhab. The argument is there for the Hanafi madhab. The practice is there for the Hanafi madhab from, 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 uh, from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh and so on. If you take the, the opinion of the, of the major Darul Ulooms of the Hanafi madhab, whether it is Darulum Deoband or Darulum Karachi or Saharanpur and so on, they have sighting of the moon. So it's not that, you know, the, the Darulums in Pakistan, they say, you know what, we're not going to sight the moon. We're just simply going to pick up the phone, ring Darulum Deoband and say, have you sighted the moon? Yes, you have. So we're going to start the month in Karachi or something like that. No, it does not work. They have their own sighting. The next argument is what we have is these people try to try to justify themselves, the ones who try to force calculations on the Islamic world. They try to put forth this argument of alam uh, tarakaifa, and and many Muslims get affected by it because everybody knows alam tarakaifa. So let's explore that. So what's happening here is the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says sumu li ru'yatihi wa aftiru li ru'yati. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. Fast when you sight the moon and cease fasting when you sight it, meaning the moon. So the word here is ru'uya, meaning sight. Our brothers and sisters try to put forth an argument which does not exist in classical Islamic uh, scholarship at all. They say this word ru'uya does not mean sight. And we say, what is your evidence? And they say, have you not come across? Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashabil feel? The same, the derivative of the same root word is used, which is Tara. Did you not see what your Lord did with the people of the elephant? So what they're trying to say is they're saying, look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not even born at the time of the incident of the people of the elephant. So how could he have seen it? So if Ru'ya means sight, he could not have physically sighted it because this incident happened before his birth, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When you study grammar, this is this is and and actually the 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 commentary of the hadith and the actions of the Muslims. This is a extremely flimsy argument from a grammatical point of view. First, sumu li ru'yatihi fast when you sight it uses a singular object. Waftiru li ru'yatihi and cease fasting when you see it. Singular object, there's no ambiguity in the Arabic language that this singular object is referring to the moon. Versus when you do the grammatical analysis of this verse, Alam tara kaifa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashabil feel, it is actually connected in two different ways. This tara is connected to kaifa fa'ala rabbuka and also connected to bi ashabil feel. So that's why the way the word, the root word ra'a, the root word ra'a is used in ru'ya and tara is different in Arabic language. Argument number two. We have to look at the actions of the Sahaba Karam. When the Sahaba Karam heard from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sumu li ru'yatihi wa aftiru li ru'yatihi, fast when you sight it and, and cease to fast when you sight uh, the, the, the moon, what did they do? Did they turn to their calculations or did they went, venture outside and look at the moon? They ventured outside to look at the moon. Argument number three, and this is in all the commentaries of hadith, nobody has ever interpreted this ru'ya to mean anything else apart from citing argument number four is that not only rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam doesn't not only does he say to cite it he also said if it's obstructed from you or you do not see it complete 30 days if this was based in science what would what would be the point of talking about clouds and obstructions and anything else associated with it so grammatically and also syntactically and also from the from the commentary of this hadith it makes no sense to interpret this any other way except citing so then people say okay 
how do you verify sighting? So people can claim sighting all over the place. For example, in this month of, of the Hijjah, Saudi Arabia claimed to have sighted the moon, which was six, six hours old. How do you verify it? Obviously science. Okay. So basically, uh, you know, you, you look at science, if the moon is not even born or there's no conjunction, how are you going to cite it? Now, some people negate it outright. They say, no, 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 we don't, we don't use science in moon sighting at all. Okay. Well, the same people, when it comes to solar eclipse and lunar eclipse, they, they say the lunar eclipse started at 1021, finished at 1137. The solar eclipse started at this time, finished at this time and so on. Why do you use science for that? Brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ash-shamsu wal qamaru bi husban, the sun and the moon, they follow a calculated path. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself talks about the calculations in the Quran. Nevertheless, for these people who are anti-science, let's reject that and say, okay, we're not going to use science. The second option that you have is what the Hanafi madhab talks about, jam'un kathir or jam ghafir, the term that's used in Urdu, which means on a clear horizon, so many people sight the moon that it's impossible for it to be a lie. That means it's impossible for so many people to get together, collude with each other and say, look, we've sighted the moon and lie about it. Cannot happen. Interestingly, in Saudi Arabia, there's never a jam ghafir or jam kathir sighting at all. It's there are nine I believe nine moon sighting committees, they come back, they submit their report, the moon is not sighting, and it's certain individuals in the same region who continuously sight the moon. Then, as I talked about time zones, basically imagine that if you're flying from Asia somewhere, let's say if you're flying from Karachi, as your plane moves westward, west on the globe, the sunset is later, and it will be easier for you to sight the moon because the sunset will be later, the moon will be bigger. So if the moon is sighted in Karachi, then New York is several hours later, then the moon will be easily sighted. California is even three hours later than New York, the moon will be even bigger and easier sighted. However, what happens in Saudi Arabia, people are not really following a global moon sighting, they're following the sighting from a singular country, Saudi Arabia. Not only they're following it from a singular country, they're following it from a singular location, almost a singular location in Saudi Arabia, which has been claiming to have sighted the moon for the last three decades. This makes no sense in Islam. It makes no sense in science. How is it possible that a singular location on Earth continuously sights the moon before anybody else? Nobody else before them on the east has sighted the moon and nobody due west of them sighted the moon the next day. That's impossible. So Saudi Arabia, in a region near uh, in, in, in Saudi Arabia sights the moon and nobody so many hours later in California and Los Angeles where the sunset is so much later, nobody sights it. That's not possible. Let's talk about factually what happens um, basically when the new moon is, is born. So remember in Islam, Islam has nothing to do with the birth of the moon. It has to do with the sighting of the moon. So what happens is scientifically, uh, the earth the moon and the sun is in a straight line so when it's in a straight line as you know the moon has no light of its own the sunlight falls on the moon and on this side there's no sunlight because they're all in a straight line so you cannot see anything it's dark in arabic this is not called hilal it's called mahaq in english it's called the dark black moon it cannot be sighted so a, a, a good a few hours depending on the situation 10 to 12 hours and a good 10 to 12 hours after the conjunction this moon cannot be sighted this is called the dungeon limit. This moon cannot be sighted. Why? Because there's no light. So as the moon continues to climb up the orbit, the sunlight, the parts of the moon which is lit up can now be seen from the earth. And this is the first time when you see the crescent. And the moon continues to go until you see the, the full moon. And then you see three quarters and then and the whole process starts all over again. So that's the reason why the six hour moon, the Saudi Arabia uh, claimed to have seen on the Hijjah was not uh, cited by mass amounts of people could not have been seen even using technology some people they say look if you have a telescope brother there's no light so there's no telescope which can invent light which does not exist it cannot be seen but a telescope or binocular there's no light for to reach earth you cannot see it if you go on a helicopter you will not be able to see it if you go on a plane you will not be able to see it because there is no light reaching earth for you to see it cannot happen some people asked they said why don't just follow saudi arabia the reason being is there is no 12 monthly moon sighting or announcement from saudi arabia at all for 15 years i have closely read the arguments which are put forth 
for following Saudi Arabia. I have spoken to the scholars. I have, uh, I, I have, I have heard them. Uh, I've communicated with them. And a singular thing with most of the scholars or the mosque committees and stuff do not tell their congregation is there is no 12 month moon sighting system in Saudi Arabia. So for the month of Safar, there is no decision by Saudi Arabia based on moon sighting at all. So if you want to follow moon sighting, there's no decision. So what these scholars and, 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 and committee members and communities say is they concentrate on Ramadan, they concentrate on Eid, but they never talk about the other. So Saudi Arabia does not have a 12 monthly moon sighting system at all. So how can you follow something which does not exist? It cannot be done. Now what should happen is these people who are putting this on their mosque timetable or on their mosque announcement boards or they're telling their communities should tell people that basically we don't have a moon sighting, uh, inf we don't have any moon sighting information from Saudi Arabia for Safar because there's no announcement. Tell people that instead of actually making people believe that you're following a 12 month moon sighting system from Saudi Arabia because it does not exist. Secondly, and most importantly, the Saudi scholars have never told anybody to follow their moon sighting. Unanimously, the Saudi scholars tell people to follow their local sighting. It's astounding that mosques, imams, community members, committee members, leaders, uh, they continuously, those who, who follow the opinions favored by Saudi scholars, turn around and follow Saudi Arabia on moon sighting when the Saudi scholars never tell you to. Uh, they, they, they unanimously tell you to go and follow the moon sighting of your own place. Yet, without an argument, there are thousands of people who turn away from that. Uh, their statements, their fatawa, which are clear, unambiguous, without doubt, and they follow Saudi Arabia. You will see that in communities across the West. No idea why they do that. So as I talked about some of these issues, I've discussed it in detail in my two-hour video. This was just a, 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 a summary. What should happen is moon sighting is, is, is a established practice of Muslims. When the imams, when the community leaders, when the committee members, when the people who are part of the congregation stand up in their local communities and they say, you know what, we're going to fulfill the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We're going to fulfill the practice of Muslims that has been around for over 1400 years. We are actually going to go and try to sight the moon. This will be revived in our communities. So now, now let's talk about the Safar 1440 moon which will be uh, cited in Americas and Americas by uh, what I mean is North America, South America, Central America, Europe and parts of Asia on the 9th of October which will be the 29th of Muharram. On that day as far as parts of Asia is concerned, Europe and parts of Africa is concerned, there's actually little to no chance of this moon being cited uh, whatsoever. However, in certain parts of Americas, if the weather is good, there is a chance where this moon could be sighted. In other parts, it could be sighted using optical aid. When it comes to the next day, which is the 10th of October, this moon can be easily sighted across the globe or most parts of the globe, inshallah. The uh, chart that Rifaqul Ulama produced for this month of Safar, it also clearly states that in parts of Europe and Africa, the conditions for this moon are not good to be sighted. As I said, it could be sighted in parts of Americas if the weather is good versus in other parts, it could be sighted using an optical aid such as telescope or binoculars or something like that, inshallah. So there's a possibility that Safar will start on the 11th of October throughout the world, except as I said, there's a chance in America's perhaps if the weather is exceptional uh, or they use optical aid, they could sight the moon. But generally speaking, 11th of October is the start of Safar. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.